I'm reminded of this tweet from Alan Ng over at Film Threat because he got a screener copy of The Acolyte prior to its official release. So he was able to see the first four episodes before everyone else did. And this is what he wrote. Final verdict, the third episode of The Acolyte will finally kill Star Wars for the vast majority of pre-Disney Star Wars fans. Based on Lucasfilm comments of late, they are okay with that. And now we finally have the third episode of The Acolyte, and it's looking like he is 100% right when it comes to this. Star Wars The Acolyte audience score gets even worse for Disney and Lucasfilm following introduction of lesbian witches. Uh, I never thought I would see that, like lesbian space witches associated with Star Wars, but here we are, I guess. That's what happens when you have someone like Leslie Headland <laughs> making this show. If the Walt Disney Company and Lucasfilm thought their audience scores could get any worse following the first two episodes of the show, they received a rude awakening as the show's audience scores across multiple aggregators has, simp- uh, has sharply fallen. Following the release of the first two episodes, the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes sat at 32% with an average rating of 2.1 out of 5. That score has now fallen to 20% with an average rating of 1.5 out of 5. Even the critic score has declined from 93% to 85%. And since the publication of that article, the audience score has slightly decreased. It's now sitting at 17%, but it did go up a little bit to 86% from 85 for critics. So I guess that's a small victory for the Acolyte, but going down to 17%, uh, that means this is officially the worst reviewed Star Wars property today as far as audience score goes and that's even worse than the star wars holiday special but even then there's still some people who ironically like that i don't think there's people who ironically like the acolyte if anything they kind of like just laughing at it but still that's i don't think that's what disney's hoping for because you know that really doesn't make them money going back to the article it's talking about other sites as well that have uh, seen a decrease in rating following their release of the third episode IMDb it went from 1. or 5.1 out of 10 uh, to 4.0 out of 10 and still one is the plurality of the reviews and people are probably going to defend this or defend the acolyte by saying that these are just review bombing and things like that and okay sure review bombing does happen but isn't there like the opposite of that I think it's called love bombing or just the opposite of review bombing uh, or positive review bombing where People are trying to give it positive reviews and that really does happen both ways. And it's funny. The only time people complain about it is when it's a show where people have like a lot of criticism for it because even all the Disney star Wars stuff, we haven't seen this review bombing or accusations of review bombing. Like even things like let's say rogue one, for instance, that's one that's pretty well received from George Lucas star Wars fans. And a lot of people who'd be complaining about the acolyte were saying, yeah, but Rogue One was fine. And that also stars a strong female character and a non-white guy. So if you're going to complain about uh, people saying like, oh, they're just racist and sexist, that's why they don't like it. Well, it really doesn't hold water when some of the more well-received Disney Star Wars properties also feature non-white characters and strong females. Uh, To me, it kind of strikes me as a cope when people are just trying to say it's review bombing because All it means is the consensus of people reviewing it are negative, which, yeah, that's pretty much what these aggregate sites are for. Are you complaining that people create accounts in order to give it a negative review? Okay, sure, but that just means they're passionate fans, where if you're passionate fans and they're upset with the show that you produced, well, then I think you kind of messed up as a studio to drive them to deliberately go to the effort to create an account in order to actually give it a negative review. If you're going to say that leads aren't actual people reviewing it, it's just bots and stuff like that. It's like, I think you're giving a lot of credit to people out there. Or you're, you're saying that they have very little time on their hands because it takes nothing to give it a negative review. It takes a little bit of effort to create a bunch of bots and stuff like that to review it. And I don't think people are really doing that in any significant numbers in order to affect the results like it did. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it is. Uh, present me the information. I'm willing to see it. But so far that just seems like it's a cope from the people who like the disney star wars stuff uh point out other sites that have negative reviews uh showing right here how the scores from the first couple episodes were sitting at 5.8 5.6 now the third episode that was reviewed individually at 3.7 so that seems to be where a lot of the 
issues arise, kind of like what Alan was saying over at Film Threat. And a lot of this just has to do with the fact that they're trying to break the Star Wars lore, or change the Star Wars lore. And it, to me, I don't get why you're going to be doing that. Because if you're going to be adapting something, you're going to be working off a pre-existing franchise, then you should probably try to stick within those confines. Because these are the rules that you have before you. And if you can't stick with them, it's like, okay, fine, do your own thing. Uh, but don't just be like, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't like this. So I'm just going to change it in order to suit what I want. Because a lot of fans of the franchise aren't going to be happy when you're just arbitrarily changing things just because you want to and worse yet you're doing it because you're trying to push your own beliefs and there happen to be very unpopular beliefs as we can see from these scores right here these negative reactions come in the wake of an extremely soft opening debut as far as viewership data analytic company illuminate reported that the first two episodes only garnered 210 million minutes watched in the united states between may 31st and june 6th for comparison, according to Nielsen, Ahsoka 2 episode premiere brought in 129 million minutes viewed when it premiered last year. Not only is this not well received, but it's also not getting viewership either. Couple that with the fact that this is one of the more expensive Disney Plus Star Wars shows to date, and you got a complete disaster for Disney and Lucasfilm. And I really do think this was kind of the goal for them, not necessarily to lose money. I think they went into this hoping that it would probably capture some of those George Lucas Star Wars fans but at some point they kind of changed focus at least a little bit where they're like you know what we're not even going to try trying uh, regaining that segment of the audience anymore so let's just lean into this identity politics stuff let's just make this Disney Star Wars now this is a new era and this is the first part of their new era which is leaning into this particular segment of the audience uh, it's not a particularly big segment of the audience but still they're just going to try to lean into this thing and be like let's just instead of trying to appease the old star wars fans let's just try to appease this new group of star wars fans and make something just from them moving forward and that's why we're seeing stuff like this where it's like oh they're going to be doing a ray movie and other things a lot of people are saying this is a terrible idea but i think they're like you know what yeah, screw those people. We're just going to be doing this now. We're not even going to try to make anything for them. So if you're a George Lucas Star Wars fan, just understand that they're never going to make anything for you. If they make something that you do enjoy, that was not necessarily <laughs> intentional on their part. I mean, I'm sure there's some things that you could actually like about stuff that they're putting out, but their effort is not geared towards you. You're not the target audience anymore, even though all the data suggests that what is it? I heard something recently. Uh, I wish I had it pulled up. Star Wars fans are basically like 70% males over 30 or something like that. And they're, they're not trying to appease those people anymore, which, okay, if you're going to try to create something to appease a different demographic, you're free to do so. But as you can see, it's not something that's really going to work out for you right now. Wait, no, this is the old one. Here's a new one right here. Messed up. I'm pulling that up, but still this is what they're going to be getting at if they continue on this path. And uh, maybe they're hoping that if they continue with this, then people will just, you know, kind of just leave them alone. The old Star Wars fans will leave them alone. Then the only people who will be reviewing it are their new Star Wars fans. And, you know, I really don't care if that's the case, if this has a hundred percent for audience score or hundred percent for critic score, because I've said before, this isn't for me. It's kind of disappointing that I'm not going to see any more Star Wars stuff that I like, but it is kind of funny every once in a while just getting a bunch of stuff like I've never personally done this, but I think it would be kind of fun just to get a bunch of old toys and things like that. Just kind of throw them in a big heap and set them on fire because that's kind of what it's like watching Disney Star Wars stuff at this point. It's not the same as if you were playing with those toys and enjoying them, but there's still some amusement to be had with that. But let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Do you think there's any saving Disney Star Wars or do you think it's pretty much just done at this point? And also, if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date with the latest entertainment news. And if you can, click that like button and share the video because it really helps out with the channel. Thank you.